Hey guys, today we will be looking at writing your very own Solnit. Okay, I'll be honest with you, when I started out with Java, I was really, really skeptical of the Solnit concept because I started out five, yeah, five years ago understanding Solnit and that back then we did not have such a beautiful IDE. We used to code in Notepad and we had Apache Tomcat to run on and it was horrible. I'm not joking, it was absolutely horrible. But we learned, we got through it, we persevered, if I'm right, persevered? I don't know. Okay, we got through it and we did pretty well for ourselves. So now I'll be teaching you how to write your very own sublet and it is damn simple you won't believe it how simple it is and you'll be shocked as to how simple it is <laughs> so as you can see what we need to do why do we write a servlet why do we need to understand the concept of servlets what happens is when you have a certain form on your web on your website sorry so what you need to do is you need to perform certain functionality which will be executed on certain requests that is performed by the user you cannot write all your functionality inside the web page itself you need something that will be outside that will provide you with certain elements that are not specific to this web page that will give you the power to process the request and then create a response so basically what that tells you is you need to write certain functionality suppose the best example I can give you is login every every website today has a login page right now the login needs database connectivity now you cannot code that in your web page itself obviously you can do it there are ways to do it but it's too hard and too difficult and not the recommended way it's not safe as well so what you need to do is you need some inputs from the user we'll be talking in context of login maybe so you take the inputs from the user and then you need a certain class or certain thing which will be outside this index index.jsp and it will process it and then it will show you the results simple enough so one way to do it is to write a servlet now as you may or may not know every JSP page eventually is a servlet that's right I am not joking you that is the truth when you have a container a server which will execute your JSP page every every server which runs the JSP website has a servlet container contained within it inside which your JSPs are converted to servlets and then executed so all of this will be converted to servlet and then executed on to the web page simple right if it is not simple forget about it you don't need to know all this you need to know how to create a servlet so let's do that click on web pages or web INF sorry don't click on web and if click click on web pages go to new create servlet I'll just write name servlet because I'll be just passing the name of the user and will be displaying it on the next page okay don't bother about all this click on finish your servlet is ready I mean I would die for when I was learning you had to write all of this with thousands of errors because we were very dumb but you get this ready-made these days so you don't need to worry about it okay enough about what I did and how spoiled you are we'll continue with the elements that you need to know when you're writing your own servlet so this is a very basic HTTP servlet there are two types actually three types to write a servlet but I'll just explain this HTTP servlet because this is what you'll be using most of the times what happens is there are two ways to get a request in the server from the web page the two ways are get method and post method now what the servlet will do is it will take 
either the get or the post method and it will call the same function process request this function is where you write your logic simple enough so you don't need to worry about anything once you create the servlet all you need to do is write your logic inside this logic is the functionality that you want to provide now in our case let us say we have a input type text name and an input type submit what will happen is once the user enters his name in the text box will, he will click on submit that will be redirected to this servlet processing will be done and will create a response saying hello welcome and the user's name that he entered in the previous page simple enough okay now what we do over here is you have two two uh, very important things to remember the HTTP servlet request and the HTTP servlet response what this does is it takes your HTTP request it bundles it in a servlet request and it brings it into this object this object is what you use to get things which were on this page now how do you do that suppose I want to get the name that was entered over here so I know that the name of that particular input type was txt name so I can use that txt name and it will be inside this request object it is that simple okay now let's talk about the response object the response object will help you create a response that's right it's basically as simple as that all you have to do is you have to tell what type of content you want to response so I can have any type of content I can have audio video files and all those things but in this case we are telling the content we are setting the content type to text slash HTML what this will do is it will tell that the response is of HTML and the processing should be done with HTML if I write only text this will be displays, displayed as it is now what is this as you can see you have created a you have set the content type now to write inside the content type you need a print writer object this print writer object is set to the get writer method of the response object so you have this out object which will help you write inside the response and this response will be displayed on the web page it is really that simple so just take out these comments now as you can see this is a very basic basic HTML that they have written they have written servlet name servlet and servlet name servlet at and they're writing the request dot context back so what we'll do is we'll just change this okay before we change this let us link this name servlet dot java to index dot gsp to do this is very simple all you need to do is write a form tag that's right a form tag is a very simple way of telling what you need to do on certain action by the user most probably it will be submit what this does it will submit the page and it will be submitting it to the form and the form will be taking the bundle of request parameters that is this and this and it will be compiling it and it will be sending it to the name servlet and how does it do that pretty easy just write action and the name of your servlet that's right it's as simple as that and you just need to specify the type by default it is the get method which is used but I say I want to use the post method so you have your name servlet and your post method now what we need to do is we need to take this txt name and then display it in our servlet simple enough I just say welcome user and we just write the name how do you get the name as I told you before the name will be encompassed within the request object so you get parameter and I just specify the name 
of the input type which we required on our first page so this will take this parameter with this name find it in this page it will take the text of it return the string which is inside that particular txt name and it will print it how simple does that sound my friends is that simple so just click on sorry just press shift f6 it'll run the index.jsp we'll have a demo we'll see if it runs or not it should run as I said before it will okay I'll just write in my name click on submit welcome user that's my name so it was that easy so what are the things that you need to remember you need to write a form tag which will take your servlet's name and link it with your particular web page you don't need to specify this type if you're not passing large amounts of data if you're passing large amounts of data to your request you need to specify is at post because get has a limitation of how much data the server can take the next thing that you need to know is inside process request is where you write your logic and this logic will be executed once this form is submitted and this form will be submitted using an input type or JavaScript so there are plenty of ways plenty of manipulations that you can do with this basic structure that we have prepared over here now we'll be looking at in our next tutorial how to write database connectivity inside your servlet so that you can do your very own login or you want to show some data you want to submit some data to your database and all of those things it is very simple it's very fun so practice on servlet till then and we'll be seeing you next time with database connectivity thank you for watching